Okay, let's take a live look at what's happening in the pre-market as we get ready for another trading week, and we're looking at a touch of buying. Now, remember, we're coming off a week with lots of volatility, and uh, a week ago this time, there was uh, no trading in Toronto, but there was what felt like market carnage in the U.S., and it created all sorts of worries about whether the U.S. was headed into a recession. By the end of the week, though, we had seen a nice rebound for the stock market. Where does it leave us? Let's bring back Ross Healy, who's with us uh, this half hour. And Ross, uh, I know August can be, if you look at history, a period of volatility. But I'll tell you, a lot of people were feeling a little <laughs> panicked early last week. What's been your take on the market mood? Okay, um, listen, John, what I'd like to do is back up and, and uh, talk about NVIDIA for just a moment because oh, it, it leads yeah, sure. into my, okay. my, my, my market uh, comment. And yeah. you, you remember the last time I was on with you, I issued an a, a outright sell on NVIDIA, which, of course, has worked out very, very, very well. Very, very, very your, your timing on that call for our audience was uh, extremely uh, bang on, even if you got people throwing rotten tomatoes at you or anything Well, like that they the did on social media. <laughs> I, have to, uh, I have to tell you probably to the... Uh, chagrin of uh, some of those who criticized me then. Although, of course, now that there is a little rally in the market, what's everybody saying? Time to get back. It was just by the dip. Well, uh, unfortunately, I don't think so. The in, NVIDIA reached a valuation level, which uh, in, in our mathematics is, is like a dead peak. And it couldn't go any further. Furthermore, it was extremely expensive, as I pointed out. Well, the, the and, and that was on a price to book basis. Well, the stock market itself and the Nasdaq in particular trades very much like a single stock. And in mm. fact, you can we can value uh, in um, the, the Nasdaq like a single stock. And indeed, it peaked at nine and a half times book adjusted book value, which is one of our critical breakpoints. And how critical was it? Well. At the peak in 2021-22, uh, 20, the NASDAQ uh, hit uh, that nine and a half times book, and that's when it started its big 35% decline. Well, it went back there and did it again. So we've got a start on, uh, on a setback, but I don't think it's uh, by far and away the end as of yet. And I think there's another good, nice leg down before I think there will be a good trading opportunity. Interesting. So if you're clearly cautious on the high flyers in tech, yep. when you look in the market, where do you see opportunity right now? What do you like? Well, the kind of things that I like are, are first of all, are, are, are value stocks. Um, I think more, more than anything. But uh, when I look at uh, the market, I, I have to focus on uh, the Canadian market, which is trading, by the way, at one and a half times book, and NASDAQ at nine and a half, uh, yeah, nine and a half times book. And you look at the, the, at the two and you say, if you were looking to head uh, to invest for five years, where would you rather be, here or here? And uh, I look at the Canadian market and I say, look, at over the, over the many, 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 many years that I've been here, there has been a cycle back and forth between Canada and the States. We've had a long Canadian, at least a sorry, long, long American advantage. And I think now we are heading into a Canadian advantage. But more uh, uh, important, I think, is the fact that there's a lot of... Um, uh, of, of commodity stocks, in which I'm thinking uh, um, precious metals and gold in the Canadian index. And um, I think both of those are looking very, very good for the long term. Hmm. Well, we've talked a lot about the gold story and the outperformance yes. there. I mean, are there individual gold stocks that you like? Oh, listen, um, I... Uh, <laughs> practically any of them, to tell you the truth, because mm. some of them are, are dirt cheap. But in terms of quality, I would uh, go for uh, Ignico Eagle and uh, Alamos Gold, uh, AGI, as being probably two of the, of the highest quality of the, uh, of, of the gold stocks to be invested in. What's the, what's the case around that? What is it that appeals to you as an investor? Okay. Um, uh, Ignico Eagle acquired uh, Kirkland Gold. Uh, and therefore uh, acquired a, a lot of undeveloped property. They had a lot of money, so you put together undeveloped property, which is hard to find, with a lot of money, and you've got yourself a, a, a nice combination. 
Um, uh, Alamos Gold has been a fabulously successful uh, explorer of, uh, of uh, gold in Canada, developing high quality reserves. And I saw you had uh, our parent company, BC, on that list as well. Hasn't been the easiest time for telcos. BCE, I, well, I know it's been difficult for them, but, uh, but BCE got down to an absolutely absurdly low level, a beautiful high yield. And, and uh, I think the stock was off 42% from its high. Uh, well, in a case like that, when you had almost heading on to a 10% yield and a, and a, and a, and a 40%, 42% decline, John, there are opportunities, times when you just have to do something, and, and this was one of them. Okay. The